Welcome to VPI Documentaries, a video series as part of the Federal Highway Administration's Everyday Counts Virtual Public Involvement Program. This video features New Mexico Department of Transportation's rural and tribal engagement. My name is Bill Hutchinson, and I am the manager of the Roadside Environment Group. My name is Jennifer Mullins. I'm the NEPA Public Involvement Lead for New Mexico DOT. New Mexico itself has well, many unique qualities. We have 22 sovereign Indian nations, approximately 11% of our population. We have an additional 9% of the population is our immigrants, perhaps 70% of them from Mexico, largely rural. Web penetration into those parts of the state is lags behind much of the rest of the country. We have somewhere between 13 and 20% broadband accessibility in the rural parts of the state. Prior to March of 2020, we used traditional methods and typically involved in-person meetings, working groups, printed materials, newspaper advertisements. But when the pandemic hit in March of 2020, suddenly our state was dealing with curfews, restrictions, limitations on gatherings, and we had to quickly adapt to using virtual tools. But we used various platforms for in-person meetings. We used social media to reach to different reach different communities. We started creating project-based websites to share more information with communities, survey tools, polls to figure out what people needed and what their questions were. I would say that the traditional techniques are newspaper advertisements. We still have printed materials. We use direct mailers. We'll send out postcards or newsletters to inform the community about what we're doing and at least try to provide more information to entice them to participate in the meetings. We've also continued to print copies of presentations and distribute paper copies where necessary and have those available in central locations. And there have been some exterior face-to-face -face public meetings with certain folks who are just more comfortable with that setting. And we still, we still provide translation. So we'll do interpretation during the meetings and translate materials. The chapter houses are the most local form of government in the Navajo Nation, which is the largest tribal entity in the state. We reach out to someone in the community who is a representative. You know, maybe it's someone who works with the DOT that is familiar with that community, or if it's a municipality, you know, a government representative or someone who's well known in the community to figure out what the best way is to reach those people. When the COVID pandemic hit, the Navajo Nation president, the Navajo Nation government was using Facebook predominantly to communicate information to the community. And so that's how we decided to start reaching out to people. We would advertise our meeting using the local radio stations and we would also ask the Navajo Nation to post our meeting on their Facebook accounts as well. One example is a bridge project that we had in the northwest part of the state. In 2019, we had an in-person meeting where we had dozens of community members who attended. We had the COVID pandemic, which limited our ability to communicate with them. We decided to use a telephone town hall method of communicating, and that allowed representatives from our agency to reach community members using landlines. So we took data from voter registration and that allowed people to reach us and communicate on their landlines rather than relying on cell phones and computers. We found that we had 119 participants, which was a much bigger number of participants than in the past. And it was sort of held like a radio show. You know, people, we would bring them on live and they would ask their questions and we would have interactive sessions with questions and answers. We have a project, a study ongoing involving New Mexico 14, which is referred to as Cerrillos Road, and it's in the heart of Santa Fe. It's also a former segment of Route 66. It's also home to the Santa Fe Indian School, the Santa Fe Indian Hospital, the School for the Deaf, in order to reach this broad and diverse community, we decided to use a blend of traditional and 
and virtual tools. And so we used social media posts to advertise and let people know what we were doing. We've held Zoom webinar, live meetings with our stakeholders and with the public. And then we've used MetroQuest survey. It allowed us to be able to provide background information to the community about the public, but also to gather feedback from them. And that was really one of the first projects where we've had project-specific websites. So this is a new platform we're developing, and we wanted to create some sort of layout that would be easy for the public to follow and some consistency. As we look through the website, I, it'll have a project overview, which will just describe the general project and a map showing the project area. There should be a, a section for public involvement, so that way any previous meetings or upcoming meetings will be announced there. Materials such as recorded presentations, handouts are available. And then we have a project resources section, so that way people can access background study documents. They can see the draft study or if there were traffic studies that were available. And then also a timeline, so that way they can have a, a better understanding and a grasp of all the different phases and, and how they overlap with each other. Because of the rural nature of the state, people would have to drive long distances for physical public meetings. Typically those meetings would be staged somewhere around six o'clock, something so people getting off work could come to them maybe in transition, but we're seeing it's far more convenient for many folk just to tune in from their home. And of course with the website, they can go anytime if it's an actual structured meeting. We still have it in the evening hours, but they don't have a long drive in front of them to get there. Our learning lessons in general have been to pause, listen, and ad adapt. R writing or phone conversations to report or even letters, uh, providing multiple ways to give feedback is also very important. We've also asked our teams to be innovative and creative. And our goal ultimately is to develop a guidance for the practitioners with, uh, within the DOT, but also the consultants. And when we see that something isn't working, then we can make changes along the way. Before we would typically have public meetings and we'd get, if on an average project, maybe you'd get a couple dozen people showing up. Now we get far more people attending and far more information back. And so we're trying to figure out how do, they, how do they compare? What's the quality of the information we're getting? But I think the virtual tools do help us hit a broader audience. It's also helping our teams to sort of think about our approach a little bit more thoroughly, plan a little bit better. And overall, I think our public involvement is improving, definitely.